there's tremendous potential for children with hearing loss today to learn spoken language to levels where they really will be able to communicate with their friends and be able to learn in school with their age level peers in regular classes and the world is wide open. Hearing, listening, speech. The fundamentals of communication. The fundamentals of learning. Fundamentals embraced by Crex SoundBridge program for children with hearing loss. SoundBridge actually was started by parents in 1966 and very soon after that became part of CREC. It's the first of the special ed programs that CREC has that joined with CREC. But it really originally started by parents. We wanted to make sure that their children had the opportunity to learn to talk. It's very unusual for a child to have no hearing at all. Um, it's even more unusual for a child to have no usable hearing. Given access to sound, there's no reason that they can't learn to listen and talk. We're educational audiologists where we take information about the child's hearing and we bring it back to the schools so that schools understand what the hearing loss means and understand the, the importance of the technology that the child's using. We care a lot about um, the child's auditory abilities, their listening abilities, and we're there to help with their educational planning to support their needs at the school systems. I think SoundBridge is special because we're a public school program and we take students all ages from birth up through high school and when we see there's a need we create a program. So we saw a need as our students were going off to college and we have audiological support now for college students. So, um, we saw a need to grow so we could take students back to the mainstream as they were ready to go back to their hometowns. We created a program and so I think that the program is dynamic, it's ever-changing to be responsive to support the needs of hearing impaired children and their families. For the children who need the most support, we have our SoundBridge Academy, and those kids are in classes in the Weathersfield Public Schools. We've been in partnership with Weathersfield for many, many years in providing services to children who need more intensive services. SoundBridge serves over 600 students, babies, and toddlers who have hearing loss through a wide variety of programs and cutting-edge technology, depending upon their needs. Over 90% of the students attend regular classes in their home school districts, like Cameron, who attends kindergarten and receives support from a SoundBridge teacher of the hearing impaired, giving him the tools to succeed in the mainstream. It's a wonderful option um, compared to, say, immersing him in a program that is purely for hearing impaired children. He was around children who are typical, and it was almost like there is no issue, and it really made a world of difference. The big thing is that now we really can provide excellent auditory access. We can really do it with technology. And that's just so key for everything else um, in that this thing that we're going after is that the child should be able to hear so that they could learn to talk. We use lots of different types of technology from hearing aids to cochlear implants, different types of FM technology, personal, classroom sound field, FM, infrared, just lots of different types to meet a lot of different children's needs. Hearing is what you're given. Hearing is what you have. Hearing is the ability to get sound up to the brain and what the brain does with sound. Listening is what a child learns to do by attending, concentrating for communication purposes to another person. Our goal for all students is to develop the specialized hearing skills they are technologically equipped with to enable them to listen, communicate, and excel in their educational and social development. Samantha has attended the SoundBridge Early Learning Center, an integrated preschool for children with hearing loss, since she was three years old. Sammy, where do you think David is? Home. Why is he at home? Because he doesn't feel good. Sammy, where did we go? We went to the supermarket. Samantha is very lucky to be part of the first generation of babies that come up bilaterally implanted, both ears implanted. It's great, but she's going to be educating the public school in our region because she is their first cochlear implant at all. Her best chance of being mainstreamed with services as opposed to going in with a whole bunch of delays was to come to SoundBridge because they could get her at grade level before she goes into kindergarten. and. I did not think it was possible, but she's 
pretty close to grade level and she'll go into kindergarten in her home school next fall. 99% of Connecticut-born infants now undergo newborn screening, an important element in the early detection of hearing loss. Consequently, Soundbridge has had a steady increase in the enrollment of babies under six months old in our Birth to Three program. Early intervention plays an integral role in the development of children with hearing loss. Our first concern always is getting amplification and bringing sound to babies. We see hearing loss in young babies as a neurological emergency, and we like to bring them amplification as quickly as possible to help decrease that duration of deafness. The primary goals in birth to three, the emphasis is on the family and making sure that they have a, a good, solid understanding about language development and listening skills that I do. So I try to impart as much knowledge that I have onto them so that they can be the primary language teachers for their babies, so that they can most appropriately use amplification to help bring sound and have the acoustic message or have the talking accessible for their child. Hearing is the perception of sound, and through technology we can give most children the perception of sound. Listening is a behavior, and that's what we're doing at school with the teachers of the hearing impaired, with auditory verbal therapy, teaching kids how to acknowledge sound, how to uh, focus on sound, because that's how they're going to develop their speech and language. As hearing and listening develop, so does spoken language. Early identification, full-time wearing of amplification, individualized intervention and instruction, and parental partnerships are all the building blocks of learning spoken language through listening. 95% of hearing impaired children are born to hearing parents. And most hearing parents would prefer to um, communicate with their children in the language that they use. My main goal when I work with parents is to let them know that they are their child's primary teacher. What I want to remind parents of preschool children is that they're still very much a part of what's going on with the education of their child and their child developing listening skills and spoken language skills, and they are still that primary teacher. Soundbridge is a regional program for children with hearing loss whose parents have chosen to give them the priceless gift of speech. I think one of Soundbridge's biggest strengths is that the kids don't get lost in the crowd. They get their individualized attention because we have small groups, small class sizes, but then we're encouraging them to go out into the world with support. We don't send them out by themselves. Right now, I'm at Waterford High School as a junior, and I got accepted to the Greater Hartford Academy, and once I found out, I was really happy. I didn't really think I was going to make it this far as, as a junior, and, um, and on my way to a senior and make it into the Greater Hartford Academy. My teachers, they're awesome because they always do what I need and they help me. You know, as hard as it gets, sometimes we really had to make a conscious decision that she's a child who happens to be deaf, not a deaf child. And so the child part really comes first. My name is Rohit and I'm in sixth grade. In June, we decided that um, I should get the cochlear implant. You couldn't believe it. Um, all the strange muffled sound is coming and like after a few days I got used to them and I could identify them but what they were and that was the best part. My name is Matt. I'm 17 and I'm a senior. I'm interested in cooking so I would like to go to Justin Wales and pursue culinary arts. So yeah I've always dreamed about opening a restaurant. It'd be fun. My name is Mason and I'm in the seventh grade. I like middle school because it's challenging and there's lots of new things to learn. I play outside, I play baseball, I play basketball. I, I hope I hope I make the uh, dot middle school basketball team, so I'm gonna try out for that. I'm Annika, um, I'm 12 years old. Seventh grade is going well for me. Um, it's, I'm learning a lot of new things and I'm really enjoying it and so it's really fun for me. My name is Julie, I'm 16 years old, and I'm a junior. I'm taking honors Spanish, English, and chemistry. I'm thinking right now of UConn, Penn State, or Northeastern in Boston, um, and I would like to major in nursing. I'm Nathan, I'm nine, and I'm in fourth grade. When I grow up, I'd like to be an NBA player, 
that graduated from college as a scientist. Children with hearing loss, what can't they, they take part in? They can do whatever it is that they, they want to, and I think that's what's important. It's not what you can't do, it's what you can do. Here at SoundBridge, we're committed to promoting optimal development of each child's abilities, fostering confidence and joy in learning with a variety of programs for children ranging from infant to 21. Children with hearing loss really do learn to listen and talk at SoundBridge.